Coach, uh, seven fast break points for the Pacers tonight. You talked pregame about how they were leading in a bunch of categories, and I believe the fast break points was one of those. Just what does it say about your team's defense tonight? Well, in that area, it showed that we understood who we were playing and that we needed to get back with great urgency uh, to not give them 18-plus points in transition. Um, you know, the two numbers that stand out where we have to be better, especially as we go on this road trip coming up, is uh, to give them 20-second chance points. You know, just way too many offensive rebounds. Uh, so there were examples where we played good defense, Ryan, but then we didn't finish it with a defensive rebound. They had 14 offensive rebounds. And then the other one that's probably a little bit more alarming for me is the turnovers. You know, um, we had 22 for 20 points tonight. And, um, you know, you just can't – got to be a lot cleaner, sharper with the basketball. Even in that fourth quarter, you're up by 8, 10 points and a silly turnover here or there. That keeps teams around. And those can be momentum-changing plays. But so for the most part, you know, the defense was okay, rebound better. But most importantly, when it mattered, the fourth quarter defense I thought was terrific. Nikola Jokic uh, sustains early foul trouble in the second quarter. Uh, you go to a lineup without him and the team survives. Uh, just throughout the game, it felt like it was a very ticky-tack game just in terms of fouls. How does that kind of change the flow and the, the feel of a game like tonight? Well, yeah, well, to your first point, when he picked up his third foul with about, I don't know, 5, 5.40 to go, uh, that group, you know, to close out the first half, we did a pretty good job. I think we outscored them, wound up being by one, so it could have been more. And we gave Bruce a coast-to-coast -coast drive on a Jamal made free throw, which can't happen. Um, but, you know, it reminded me of the playoff game in the NBA Finals when Nicola got in foul trouble in Miami, and you find a way to win the non-Nicola minutes. And I thought we did a pretty good job of that tonight. But... Um, yeah, I mean, we went to the foul line 23 times. They went there 22, a lot of calls back and forth. So that does kind of upset the flow, but um, you just got to react to the whistle. And uh, once again, fourth quarter, I think they only scored 25 points on 42 from the field. And so I felt we finally got, you know, some quality defense uh, in, in, down the stretch. What can you say about Michael Porter Jr.'s game? The seven made threes, that's kind of what he does. But he also has five, assists. five assists. Yeah, yeah. no, I just... You know, shouted him out in the locker room. I thought Michael just had a complete basketball game tonight. Scored, rebounded, playmaked, had two blocks, a steal. Um, so there, there really wasn't one area where Michael wasn't really efficient tonight. So, uh, and that's, that, that should be his goal, right? How can I impact the game across the board? I know that I have a great jump shot. I can go seven for 11, um, you know, but I got to rebound. I got to defend. I got to use my length. And he did all that tonight, Katie. So uh, that was great to see from Michael. Have you seen more of just kind of a, a complete offensive game from him this year? Because it seems like he's been getting to the rim more, you know, look, looking at dunk, showing off his athleticism, and then the assists, like, like Katie said. Have you seen that as a trend with him this year? Yeah, I think it's kind of growing and improving upon what he showed all last season. Um, you know, I think there was a game in the playoffs where he had six or seven assists in the Western Conference Finals. So, you know, Michael has the ability. He's going to draw a crowd. I mean, people game plan for Michael Porter Jr., you know, they run him off the line. So as he's getting downhill and he draws help, making the right play. Um, I, I think one area, man, if he can continue to understand how important it is for him to pass and cut, because his man is always going to relax and he's so big and Nicole is going to find him every time. And then you talk about, I think in the New Orleans game, he attacked the closeout and had one of the best dunks I've ever seen him have wearing a Nuggets uniform in traffic on people. So, uh, yeah, Michael is just uh, – so, I, don't, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves in regards to what he's doing has never been done before from a medical standpoint. If you really understand and look at what he's doing from a medical standpoint, the brace he wears every night, and for him to go out and do what he's doing, if you just take a step back, it's, it's just incredible. So, you know, you, you have to give him so much credit, not just for the game he played tonight and the player that he is, but – everything he's been through. And I've got to remind myself of that because uh, no one else has done what he's doing, and uh, I, I really admire that in him. How, How was the day with uh, Bruce Brown? Top five? It was great. He, he got the ring. We got the win. Sign me up, Doc. <laughs> I'll take that all day, every day. Uh, but it was great to see Bruce. You could see um, that's kind of probably the neatest thing about when we have it for Jeff. We had it for Ish. We had it for Bruce. Uh, we'll have it for Thomas Bryant at some point is how excited his teammates are to see those guys and hugging him. And uh, I saw Bruce's face when he saw the ring. He couldn't get over the size of it. Um, I told the, our, our front office to give him a smaller ring because he left. But I think they gave him, a, you know, the, the same one. Um, but, yeah, we love Bruce. We miss Bruce. Hell of a player. And we wish him nothing but the best. How, how often are you 
are you checking in with, with Michael Porter about his health? I, I don't know if a ton of people would have predicted, especially after you missed the preseason, that he'd be the only starter who's played in every game at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's always conversations, especially, you know, if you, if you go back to uh, probably early January, our schedule was just nuts. I mean, I think that early back-to-back -back in January, we had nine back-to-backs, which is by far the most in the NBA. And, you know, so when you have all those games, I'm checking in with, you know, high usage guys, how they're feeling, and with Michael, especially with you know, everything he's had to battle through to make sure he's in a good place mentally and physically. And that's not just a conversation with Michael, but also our training staff, you know, Steve Short, you know, who uh, is the director of our sports science team, making sure that he's in a good place. So, uh, yeah, constant communication always helps. Aaron's been scoring at a really efficient level since he's come back. What stands out about what he's doing offensively for you guys? How efficient he's been. You know, if you look at his numbers, you know, uh, whether it's from the field, from the three, from the foul line, uh, he's doing a really good job of playing efficient basketball. Um, I love the fact that he had 10 boards tonight. He only had one at halftime. And that was a huge uh, two things I, I hammered home at the half were the rebounding and the turnovers. And I thought Aaron really, really led the charge in the second half of being active on the glass to get nine of those 10 in the second half. So I just love Aaron's efficiency right now. I mean, 20 and 10, three assists, um, getting to the foul line eight times. You know, an aggressive Aaron Gordon is a very effective Aaron Gordon. All right, thanks, everybody.